Hey guys, this is Patty B within the hauler. I got another firearm I'd like to share with y'all. This is a Swedish AG42B Youngman, chambered in 6.5 by 55 Swedish Mauser. Uh, this was uh, loaned to me by my buddy George, a uh, friend of the channel, so shout out to George for uh, making this review possible. So this is a gas-operated, magazine-fed, semi-auto rifle, and it has a uh, tilting bolt design. It's kind of a big boy. It uh, weighs 10 pounds, 5 ounces on my scale. Got a 24 and a half inch barrel and is 48 inches overall. Uh, like I said, it's chambered in Swedish Mauser, 6.5 by 55, uh, which you know was designed in the uh, 1890s for um, <clears throat> the Swedish Mauser that they adopted in 1894s, 1896s, you know, and M38s and all that. So when they wanted, uh, when Sweden wanted to go with a semi-auto rifle to uh, in the middle of uh, World War II to try to keep up with what everybody else was doing, this is what they came up with. So this was adopted in 1942, and then in uh, in the mid 50s it was upgraded from just the uh, AG42 to the AG42B with some uh, updates on it to make it uh, a little bit more modern. Uh, and then this. Uh, this was replaced in the 1960s by uh, the Swedish version of the HK G3. So it's a pretty cool rifle, you know. You don't see a whole lot of these in the States uh, or semi auto rifles and 6.5 Swedish Mauser. So it's pretty cool for sure. Uh, some of the features on this gun, we'll start back here. You know, you've got a nice wood, dot, wood stock. You've got your stock disc that you have on uh, all the old Swedish rifles. We've got sling attachment over here. This is your safety. That's safe. That's fire. You got your trigger. This is your dust cover, and this is these two nubs. I guess is what you would call your charging handle. Um, this is what you use to manipulate it. But you take your forward, and then you've got your bolt in the rear. Uh, this thing is well known for you know people think grand thumbs bad, but but. Young men thumb, boy, this thing, when you turn it to fire, let me remove this magazine. If you flip it to fire, and as soon as you take this dust cover all the way back, yeah, that bolt comes slamming home at about Mach 3. So, uh, the magazine is detachable. It wasn't meant to uh, be used as a detachable mag. It was made detachable just for cleaning purposes and fed through stripper, stripper clips up top. So there's your stripper clip guide, and it was designed to be loaded that way. <clears throat> uh, moving forward, so you've got our rear sight, which is kind of cool because it has a rotary dial that moves the uh, rear sight up and down, which I think goes up to 700 meters. There's a front hand guard, front sling attachment. Clean rod, got a little muzzle brake, and uh, there's the front sight. So yeah, the operation of this is uh, you know a lot different than uh, most of the rifles made from the generation. And this is uh, <clears throat> this is a direct gas impingement rifle, uh, where the, you know you have a gas port in the barrel, and it takes the gas straight back, comes out there impinges on the carrier here and the carrier unlocks the uh, bolt and uh, cycles the weapon. So it's pretty cool, you know, it doesn't have traditional charging handle, it's just got these nubs. Um, it's just kind of different for sure. This kind of dust cover kind of reminds me of the, uh, you know, uh, VZ-58 rifle. It's kind of the same shape. But this thing, when you turn it to fire, it pushes the uh, carrier forward just a smidge, and as soon as you pull these nubs back, Boom, my things comes quick, so keep your fingers out of there. Uh, take down of this rifle is pretty simple. Pull your carrier forward just a little bit, and all you do is take your safety, put it in the middle location right there, right in the center, and boom, that comes out. You're under a little spring tension, so just be careful. <clears throat> You've got your dust cover and your recoil spring, and then your bolt and carrier come right out. 
Uh, so you're a, you know, the bolt and <clears throat> the carrier, it's a tipping design that if you're based off the, you know, the uh, Tokarev SVT38 or uh, kind of similar looking to the FAL, but when it locks up, it sits right in there. You've got this little ledge and that little ledge right there. And that's how the uh, action is locked. It sits right in there perfect. <clears throat> and when the uh, gas comes through and hits the carrier, it unlocks it and pulls it back. So pretty easy stuff. Um, Reassemblies, about the same. Insert your uh, bolt into your carrier. Slide it on these rails all the way forward. Recoil spring, dust cover. and safety so all right so uh some of the history on this rifle is kind of cool is that uh you know i think in the mid 60s the swedish moved on to the uh you know the hkg3 but uh they sold the license and the equipment that they manufactured these two to egypt which made the Hakim rifle, which is, you know, chambered in a uh, eight millimeter Mauser and uh, Egypt produced those in Egypt for their military. So it's kind of a bigger version of this, which is as a big rifle as it is, but you know, the Hakim, I've never held one, but it, it's gotta be a beast. Get rid of a good look at this thing. It definitely a uh, unique rifle here. There you go. Well, uh, so we take this baby outside and see how she shoots. All right, I got some uh, 140 grain hand loads for the Jungman. So uh, let's see what we can do at uh, 100 yards with it. All right, we'll uh, dial our sight to two and uh, see how we can do it at 200. All right, I have one whiffer in there, but uh, not too bad. Uh, this thing shoots pretty good, pretty smooth. You know, the uh, 6.5 Swedish Matter doesn't have a whole lot of recoil, and shooting it out of a 10-pound DI gun just makes it nice and soft. All right, back inside from uh, shooting the young men, and uh, we'll take this magazine out, which I don't know if I mentioned it before, but it has both a front and rear latch. You kind of have to squeeze the front, and then you and the rear comes out and that's a 10 round magazine by the way i'm not sure if i mentioned that earlier or not but uh yeah i think i mentioned it out there while i was shooting but you know the swedish mauser <clears throat> cartridge the 6.5 by 55 is such a sweet little cartridge anyway it's so nice and uh well you're shooting it out of a you know a gun that weighs over 10 pounds it's just very soft shooting uh you know the swedish mauser is like 125 years old and uh it can pretty much do anything that the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor can do. It just doesn't get a lot of credit here in the United States, but it's still a popular cartridge uh, in Scandinavian countries. But uh, <clears throat> my thoughts on shooting this, 
man, it's cool. You know, like I said, it's light recoiling. Uh, the trigger is decent on it. The sights, it's kind of neat. I've, you know, rotary sights like this. It's pretty cool. Uh, the sights are more than adequate, and it was more than adequate enough out there shooting. So, like I said, big thanks to my buddy George who lent me this to put some shots through it. I wish I had more rounds to shoot, but I, I reloaded the ones I got for it. But, uh, you know, powder, primers, all that stuff's in short supply, so I couldn't put a ton through it. But I really enjoyed my time on the range with the, uh, the Jungman today. So, all right, guys. Y'all have a nice day.